I'm going to show you how to build a drinking glass from scratch. To follow along, go to Working Files, go to Photoshop Projects, and open up glass.psd. We're going to make a glass that looks something like this. Let's make a new document, File, New. And because I've been working on some other things here, I'm going to change this to the glass.psd preset. That's because that's what's open right now. But it's 1200 by 1200 pixels. I can change the pixels. You can see that. You don't have to do it this way. This is just the way I've set it up. Click OK. We have this blank slate here. I want to start off by making a ring that's going to be the cylinder that's going to be the outside of the glass. So I go over to the Shape tool, select the Ellipse tool, set this to Shape like that. I don't want to fill, no fill, but I do want a stroke. I want it to be white, but five points is fine. Could be four, three, five will work for our purposes here. Now I'm just going to draw that shape here like so. Hold on the Shift key to constrain the proportions. Hold on the space bar to kind of position it, but the position is not critical. And there's that little ring there. All right, now I'm going to make a new layer, clicking here. It's a new layer right there. And I want to select this layer down here. I want a controller command click on it to make that selection like this. Make this layer up here active. I want to fill that with white. So I can go Edit, Fill, and we'll select white here. Now I'll do controller command D to deselect that. So we have two layers here. The top one there is this solid circle, and the bottom one is this ring. Let's name these guys. The one on top is the glass base. That's going to be the bottom of the glass. And this is the glass cylinder. Now I want to extrude both of them. So I've got the glass cylinder and the glass base. I'll start with the glass base here. The order is not that important. Go to the 3D panel, click 3D extrusion, and create. Check the extrusion depth there. Way too big. The base is just going to be a thin thing at the bottom. So let's change this to something like 25. There we go. Let's go on down to the glass cylinder now. Click on that. Let's extrude that too. So go up to Extrusion here, Create. There you go. You can see it up there how large it is. Let's check it out. Let's take it up to about maybe 900,000, something like that. You can always adjust this later. All right, now I want to merge these two. So I select the top one there, go to the Panel menu, and Merge Down. And it looks like something happened to that inner circle, but really it's just the lighting here. I'll click on the light, and we'll just rotate that down a bit. You can see, there we go. We're looking down inside the cylinder to that little base there, which is actually halfway down, which is fine. All right, let's take our light and kind of position it where we want to position it eventually. So I'll go back and click on the light. I want to kind of have it pointing like that, so we throw a shadow down into the right eventually here. All right, now we need to tip these guys up so we can actually have the glass in a regular position with it residing here on the ground plane. So I'm going to go over here to do that. Got the cylinder and the base. I'm going to take the base first. I'm going to flip that 90 degrees. So I've got that selected like that. Then we have the coordinates up here by default. So I'm going to go 90 degrees. Take X, 90, and that'll rotate it like so. It's hovering above the ground plane now. So I'm going to drop it down. It's active, so all we need to do is just go to 3D and snap the object to the ground plane. Now we need to work on the cylinder, and I'm going to do something that might be a little counterintuitive. I want to rotate it minus 90 degrees because I want the bottom, I want the back to point up. I'll explain that in a second. Over here, minus 90. There you go. And you can see the arrows are pointing down to indicate that the back here is pointing up. Let's snap that one to the ground plane too. So we go 3D, snap to the ground plane. Now if I click away for a second, we'll get the current view here, get the rotate tool and rotate that. And you can see, ah, we now have, I guess this would be classified as a cup as opposed to a glass, but there you go. Looks pretty good. We can just walk away now and be happy with what we've accomplished here, but I think maybe the cylinder is a little too big. So I'm going to go down one notch here, click on that, change the extrusion size by going to here to its properties. Maybe 995 is too much. Let's bring it down to like there, 890, 900, something like that. Now I want to taper it, and that's the reason why I flipped it upside down. When you taper something, it tapers from the back. The back now is up. So I'm going to go over here, click on that, go to deform. I want to taper it. Notice the taper controls up here at the top, essentially, the front, but the back is what's going to taper. Let's taper it out to about 120 or so like that. Take whatever you want. It could be really wide glass or not, but 120 works, I think, for our purposes. There we go. Okay, we've got our glass all set up now. Now we need to make it transparent. We need to select all the materials to do that. So I go over here to the materials group. There they all are. Click on the first one, shift click on the last one to select all of them. Now, whatever we do here affects all of them equally. So let's knock the opacity way down. Yeah, I'd say right down to about six or so. It's almost going to disappear. But I want the top part right there 
to have some opacity, to give it some definition. So I click on just one of these guys to deselect them all. What is the top part? Well, it's a little confusing, remember, because we tipped it over. The top part is actually the back. So we need to go to the back inflation for the cylinder here. Let's increase its opacity to something like, I don't know, 25, 30%, something like that. Now you begin to get some definition there. We probably want to do this also for the front inflation, which is actually down here a little bit, just to give it some definition too. So the front inflation, we can knock that guy up too. But the main thing we're doing is this top one. And then probably the base needs to have a little bit of opacity as well. So here's the front inflation for the base. I'll knock that up a bit too, just to give the base a little bit of definition. And, you know, we could say we're done, right? Let's take a little bit of a render here and see how that looks. It'll take a while, so I'll fast forward. All right, there's our glass, and it looks pretty good, but it would look better if it had a background, I think. Let's just work on that. So I'm going to go down here and add a layer, a layer there, put it below our cylinder like so. I want to fill it up with a pattern, so I go to Edit, Fill, and we go to Pattern, and let's pick a pattern here. Scrolling down a ways here. You can pick any one you want, obviously. I've got this one already picked out here. It's just this kind of linen. It's barely discernible as a texture. It's just a slight texture. Click on that. Click OK. That fills up this thing with just a little bit of a texture. Gives our drop shadow a little more definition. Gives the glass a little more definition. That's nice. OK. Now we go back to our layer here. Make it active. I'm going to do a couple more things here. Click on this guy to get back to all the various meshes. I want a little reflection coming down here, so I go to Environment. There is a reflection. Let's bring that up a bit. 50% or so. I don't need to have an image base light. I can turn that off. That'll simplify the rendering. If you want to give it an image base light, that's fine. It gives it a little more definition, but we'll just turn that off for the time being to kind of simplify things. I think the opacity of the shadow is going to be a bit much at 60, so I'm going to knock it down to maybe 45, something like that. All right, let's take a look at the light now. The light's shadow needs some softness. I think we're going to have a glass that needs to be a little bit soft looking, so we can knock it up to about 15, 20%, something like that. All right, now we've got things kind of rocking and rolling here. Let's render this one for a couple seconds. All right, I think it looks pretty good. We could, again, call it a day here, but let's give the glass a little bit of definition, just a little bit of texture. To do that, I'm going to go over and give it a texture file. Use the extrusion here. Go up to Diffuse here and open this up. It already has a texture file by default, but it's empty. And we're going to fill that up. Now, with the opacity reduced, not much is going to show up here. But if I make the background black and then put some white stuff on top, That'll give it a little bit more definition and will kind of make the glass a little bit darker. So I'm going to fill it with black. I'm going to go Edit, Fill with Black. And now I'm going to put some white stuff on top of it. You can do anything you please, and eventually we're going to use a shape. But you could take, let's say, the brush tool like this. Make sure it's white, kind of smallish. Draw some strokes through it like that. Whatever your heart desires. Let's split the scene here a little bit. Window, Arrange, Two Up Vertical. Click over here and see what happens. Those guys show up like that. All right. That's kind of what can be done. Let's go back over here, though, and we'll undo that work. Go back over here to the history and go back up here just to fill. Let's put a shape in there instead. So I'm going to click on the Shape tool here, Custom Shape. I've already got a shape selected, but I'll show you what I'm looking for down here. I kind of wanted something that's like a filigree. If you know what a filigree is, kind of like lace. That one struck me as filigree there, so that's the one we're going to use. I'll draw a shape here like so. And let's just take a look at how that affects this thing over here by clicking over here. Aha. Uh -huh. Kind of cool. We could blur it a little bit maybe, something like that. But let's just duplicate it a couple of times. Go back over here, and we'll duplicate this guy. Control command j We'll jump the layer a couple of times. Take that one on top. Control command t Move it around a little bit like so. Take the next one down after we accept that one. Control or Command T and move it down as well. And wrap it around like that, just to kind of add some filigree little designs there. Accept that. Let's take a look at how that affects our little glass. Voila, it looks pretty nice. So we'll do one final render here, then we'll probably call this a day. All right, now that is pretty good, but I can see the seam there. The black creates a seam, which is one little downside of working the black here. It doesn't quite wrap around perfectly. So we can fix this. I'll show you how to fix it. Let's just go back over here. You need to select both of the elements here, glass layer and the base layer by holding down Control or Command. Now they're both selected. Get the selection tool active there. I want to rotate them a little bit. And thus we'll take that seam right to the edge like that. Let me just open this up so you see everything. Arrange. 
And let's render that. Now there's a little bit of an anomaly here in terms of how the shadow falls. And I think that's because maybe part of this got below the ground plane and part of it didn't. I'm going to do one more quick render there and just see if that's just a temporary thing or a permanent thing. It appears that that's a permanent thing. So what I want to do is move the entire glass to get it either completely above or completely below the ground plane to get rid of that. We're going to make the base darker when we do this. Go back to the selection tool here and I'm going to pull this thing just up a little bit or pull it down a little bit just to make sure it's completely above or below so there's no little anomalistic half of a shadow there. I think that's probably a good height there. Let's render that and see what happens. It should be dark on the bottom now. Yeah, it is. And it's throwing the shadow as well. So there you go. That's how we make a drinking glass from scratch.